and to encourage uh, you all that God is loving us and to have a very personal, intimate relationship with God and to be empowered by God all the time to uh, serve God. And my, actually, I come here to do training. From Monday on to Saturday, I'll be doing training. My calling mainly is to do training and revival, to train people for ministry, to bring revival to people's heart that you can be used greatly by God. And um, I thank God that He has given me the heart to have a close relationship with Him. Actually, I, I remember this. When I was newly converted, because I, when I realized that God is very real, sometimes I have thoughts like this. I, use, I share with you. I was in an elevator one time. I was a new Christian. And sometimes, you know, because since childhood, I learned boxing from my father. And in the elevator, I was doing this. And then I said, when God looks at me, would he smile or laugh at me? <laughs> would he say he's funny? It's funny that he's doing this. Because I think of God as very personal, that he's a real God. And this is very, a very important part of my life with God. And then when I experience the Holy Spirit, then that goes to a higher level. Well, I, I became a Christian in 1970. And then I became a minister in 1983. And 15 years after I became a pastor, in a, in a meeting, an evangelist laid hand on me. And when he laid hand on me, I felt power like electricity enter me. I felt great love enter me. And the love was so strong, so overwhelming. I cried for a long time. And I said, I didn't know I can experience God like that. And then I also experienced peace and burdens go away. I also smell a sweet aroma. I thought it was from God, that it was like in heaven. And I said, I never realized I can experience God like that. And when I went home that day in a public transportation, I wanted to raise my hand to praise God. But it was in a tr public transportation, so I, I couldn't do that. I leaned my hand on the window. <laughs> I was sitting in the bus and I leaned my hand on the window. And I kept praising God. I said, Lord, I didn't know that I can have this close relationship with you. And when I went home, it was already, already very late. I kept praising God. Every day, I spent a long time praising God. And one day, I cried to Jesus, Lord Jesus. Immediately, I felt power went through my whole person. I said, wow, this is wonderful. I, I got an immediate response when I prayed. So I cried again, Lord Jesus, again, I felt this power again. I said, I never have had this experience before. I can experience an immediate response when I pray to God. Mm -hmm. And then later, one day, in a meeting, I experienced the joy of the Lord. And I was very excited. And in that meeting, I was filled with the joy of the Lord. And I, I did not want to lose it. So for the whole meeting, I kept loving God, kept reaching my heart to God, and I kept experiencing the joy of the Lord. And then in the bus, when I went home, I kept keeping the joy of the Lord. I was like this. <laughs> I don't want to laugh out loud, so I just keep the joy of the Lord. <laughs> and then when I went home, I kept the joy of the Lord. And then for the next day, I kept doing that. And every day after that, and up to today, every time I think of Jesus, I can experience His joy, His power, go through my whole body. And love and motivation and the fire of the Holy Spirit, the zeal to bring revival to more people. Amen. After I experienced the Holy Spirit, I found things happening to me. I pray for people, people get healed. People experience love, experience repentance, and the joy of the Lord. I said, this is great. Because for my 15 years being a pastor before, I could never raise up a person to serve God as a minister. But after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I could raise up people one after another. And sometimes in a meeting, I could raise up a number of people to serve God. And I said, this is really special that I can have this very close, intimate relationship with God. 
I can experience him anytime, even in the middle of the night when I wake up. Immediately, when I think of Jesus, the joy of the Lord will flow through. Mm -hmm. And then when I pray for people, people experience the joy and the love of God or the healing of God or demons driven out. Mm -hmm. The point is, it's for everyone who hunger for God. Amen. It's for you. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, go to all creation and preach the gospel to them. And then he said, those who believe and are baptized will be saved. And then, miracles will follow those who believe. You can have miracles. Do you believe yeah. in miracles? Amen. Can you raise your hand? If you believe there are miracles, wonderful. Okay. How many of you have miracles happen to you when you pray for people? And the next question. Just now, everyone raise your hand. That's wonderful. But how many of you have... Miracles happen when you pray for people. Please raise your hand. Well, we still have a few hands. That's wonderful. But not too many hands. My motivation to you today is that you can have that presence of God and that very close, intimate relationship with God. Amen. That you can carry the power of God and pray for people to be healed. I've seen so many miracles. I'm surprised, always surprised, Lord, you're so real. You're so real and you can come and bless people. And in meetings, sometimes I invite people to come up and say, you want to come up and experience God? And many times, like today in a service, that woman was totally overwhelmed with the love of God, the comfort of God, and then the joy of the Lord when she came up. And I saw, this is so real. God is so real. So the more I experience Him, the more I see that we can have a very close, intimate, intimate relationship with God. That's the most important thing. The most important thing is not miracles first. It's that close relationship with God that we can experience Him anytime. Then we can have a loving relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Do you want to have that close, intimate relationship with God? Amen. That's most important. Amen. And to understand the heart of God to know how loving He is, to know how wonderful, how peaceful and joyful He is, so that any time we can experience a close relationship with Him. You know, when we look around, we can see and we can experience His love any time, just by drinking water. Amen. Amen. Very soothing, right? to the throat. <laughs> it's because God created water so wonderful for us. If water is like oily mud, we still have to drink it, right? But God created water clear, soothing water. When you drink it, you feel good, right? <laughs> we, if we have to drink muddy water, all the time, we still have to drink many water, right? We thank God. Water by itself is clear. And it shows the love of God. Now, let's try this. Close your eyes for a moment. Relax your body. Take a few deep breaths. Take a few deep breaths. How do you feel? Relaxed and comfortable, refreshing. See, God has created our body in such a wonderful way that you relax, you can actually enjoy being alive. And you can enjoy air. Everything God created is full of love. Many people know God's love, but they don't experience God's love all the time. Mm -hmm. And they don't have this very intimate experience of love, intimate relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And God has given me that, that heart to really appreciate the love of God. And I verbalize it, I describe it. Mm -hmm. And when I describe it, I hope you look at me. You learn from me. I'm a teacher. You learn from me how... When I express that love, I express with joy, with smiles, with 
freedom. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I encourage you, I know that some of you do share the word of God. Share the word of God with peace and love and freedom and enjoyment. That you can enjoy preaching, enjoy sharing, enjoy praying, enjoy life. There are two ways you can live your life. Many people live their life with burdens. Oh, so much hard work. Oh, so much hard work. Oh, there are fights in the family, yelling in the family. Some people live like that, even Christians. But you can enjoy every day. God intended for us to enjoy every day on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, do you have to suffer anymore? No. When the Lord's Prayer said, on earth as it is in heaven, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. means that we can live like the saints in heaven. But people say, no, too hard, too difficult. Let me show you, hallelujah, praise the Lord, the picture of me and my wife. <laughs> you probably cannot see it clearly. Now here, I mean, it has something blocked it, but then when you open it, that's me and my wife there. That after I experience the Holy Spirit, I want everything in my life to be in line with God's plan, God's will. In a prayer, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come. What does it mean? The kingdom of God means his kingdom of grace, that we want more people saved. That's the first meaning. The second meaning is where King Jesus is the king. Where Jesus rules. Now in heaven, God rules totally. Let me ask you, in your family, does God rule totally? Do you sometimes get angry and yell at people? When you yell at people, is God the king? No. I want my family, I want my ministry, I want my daily life, I want wherever I go to be the kingdom of God, that God is ruling, that God is totally the Lord. And, you know, sometimes, you know, between my, me and my wife, it's always positive words. But sometimes my wife noticed something about me that I need improvement, that she would tell me about it. And then I would say, thank you. And then I will listen to her and we'll communicate. That's once in a long, long while, only a few times, she got emotional. And then we have a way of communication. I just tell her, you are a little emotional now. And then she'll pay attention to it. And then she'll calm down. Then we want the marriage to be really following God's plan. Really always showing love, communicating in a peaceful way. Because in the world, people believe that when there is disagreement, you have to get angry. That's a lie many people believe. When there is disagreement, people think you have to get angry. Or when you don't get something, people think you have to get angry. But actually, it's not necessary. We can have peaceful conversation. That's God's way, right? To have peaceful conversation. And then we can have peaceful settlement to find ways to how to improve, how to learn, how to correct situations. Now for me, with my wife, my wife improves. My life improves. Everything in my life improves. Actually, what I want to tell you is, if we let God be the king in our life, every area of our life will be blessed by God. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. When we really let God be the king, seek first the kingdom of God, let God be the king, your life will be blessed by God in every single way. You know, I'm 64. I'm 64. I'm still healthy. And I play tennis. When I play tennis, that's the serve or the smash. If you play tennis, you know this. And I'm still strong and muscular. <laughs> I want to be joyful all the time. When I'm joyful, when I'm joyful and peaceful, that keeps my body healthy. 
and that's very important. Then I can live longer. You know, many pastors would retire at 64 or 70. But if I retire at 70, I'm not satisfied. I only have six more years. God has given me so many teachings I want to share with people. I want to go to different parts of the world. I want to write many books to put down these teachings. And I hope tonight this teaching can change your life. Amen. The teaching about God's love, how we can enjoy, live in God's love. Let me first tell you the different levels that we relate to God's love. The first level, now if you, if you have a pen, you can write down. The first level is to know God's love. As Christians, we all know God's love, right? First, know God's love. The second level is believe God's love. So first level is know God's love, and the second level is believe. And the third level is believe when there are difficulties. Let me ask you, if you are fired today, oh, thank you, thank you. If you are fired today, do you still believe God loves you and He, he will provide for you? Sometimes very hard, right? Mm -hmm. But let me ask you, do you believe that God is in control of everything? Yes. Oh, uh, uh, it, it's not there, it's not there. I will, I will change it, I'll, I'll come back to that. Oh, okay. I, I, I will hold it, I'll hold it, I'll control it. Okay, now, when you lose your job, you might fear, right? But the Bible tells us that everything belongs to the Lord. The world and everything in it. So if God is in control, do you believe that God can provide for you? Yes. Has God provided for you in the past? Yes. But every time when we lose a job, do we worry? Yes, yes we do. So the, sec the third level, the first level is that we know God's love. And the second is believe in God's love. And the third is believe when there are difficulties. And then the fourth level is enjoy God's love. Now when you eat, do you enjoy? Yeah. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we eat, we think of what we do after we eat, right? <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes we just think of what we're going to do after we finish eating. So sometimes we don't really enjoy the food yeah. God has created. Yeah. Let me ask you, when you pray, do you experience peace and joy? When you praise God, do you experience joy yes. and freedom? Yes. Do you enjoy it? Now actually that's the manifestation of God's love. When you experience the peace and the joy, it's God's love showing to us. Amen. So when you praise God, you can enjoy God's love. That's the, the fourth level. The fifth level is to have the love of God in a very intimate level, intimate level. Let me tell you, in my heart, I always think of God loving me right now. He's laying His hand on me now. Because I experience Him all the time. I think of God's love as very, very intimate. It's the intimate level. And then the next level is motivated by God's love to serve God. Let me tell you, my time is God's. My life is God's. My money is God's. Everything I have is God's. I have dedicated my whole life to God. That I want to be used by God. I'm motivated by God's love because I see that His love is so wonderful. Amen. So I'm totally motivated by God's love. So let's look at this. So first is to know God's love and then believe God's love and then what? Believe in difficulties and the next level experience God's love and then fifth intimate relationship in God's love, intimate. And then six, motivated by God's love. And I hope today, I will encourage you to go higher and higher. Okay, let's look at this verse. Let's read this together, Isaiah 49, 15. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. Here it says that. So can a woman forget her nursing child? Let me ask you, how many mothers are here? <coughs> how many mothers are here? Okay, thank you. Have you forgotten your umbrella or something you bought somewhere? Have you forgotten something somewhere? 
Have you forgotten your baby somewhere? Oh. Did you say, oh, did I leave my baby in the shop or on the bus <laughs> or on the roadside <laughs> or in the church? Did I leave the baby in the church? <laughs> Has it ever happened to you? No. <laughs> the mother will not forget the nursing child. Even if she forgets a nursing child, I will not forgive you, forget you. That God has put the heart of love in the mother's heart. And God has so much love for us that He thinks about us all the time. He never forgets us. Now here, you can look at it in a very intimate way. In what intimate way? Think of this as you. That God is always thinking of you in a very intimate way, in a very close sentimental way that he's thinking of you all the time. Actually, many verses in the Bible tell us that God has a very intimate relationship with us, that he always think about us all the time. Let me ask you, he think about us all the time. Do you think about God all the time? No. no. So we need to learn from God. He's thinking about us all the time. We need to learn to think about God as much as possible. You know, whatever I do, when I'm brushing my teeth, going to the washroom, taking a shower, eating, talking to people, preaching, I always think about the love of God. God is with me. When I pray, I always think of, oh, God is loving me now. Hallelujah. God is with me now. God is blessing me now. I always have this feeling of very intimate relationship. So when I lead worship and prayer, I lead it like this. Oh Lord, you're right here now. You're right here. You're thinking about us now. You're blessing us right now. Oh Jesus Lord, you are here with us, laying your hand upon us. We can enjoy your presence. That's how I lead praise and worship. And many people are touched by the love of God. When I pray like that, for the last few days, some people start to suddenly just experience the love of God, the freedom of God, the joy of the Lord, when we can worship like that. So think about God thinking about you right now. So when you pray, oh Lord Jesus, you're thinking about me right now. You are, you have me in your heart. Even though you might say, there's so many people in the world, how can God think about all the people at the same time? But God has the ability to think about each person at the same time. And He has the ability to know your sins. Have you noticed how many times when we sin, God will speak to our hearts and cause us to feel sad about our sins, mm. cause us to turn away from our sins. Mm. That is because God is thinking about us. When we sin, it hurts God's heart. And God will move in our heart. It shows that God is moving in our heart all the time. Do you feel God moving you to love Him? To pray to Him? That all the time, actually, God is moving in our heart, but very often people forget about it and didn't pay attention to it. So I, my message is always say, think about how much God is thinking about us and loving us all the time. Zephaniah 3.17, I hope you remember this Bible verse. You all know John 3.16, right? Mm -hmm. Zephaniah is a small prophet, as one of the minor prophets. So 3.17 instead of 3.16. Please remember this verse, very important. The second part, he will take great delight in you. Uh, all the verses you can read together with me. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Now here it talks about God's love in a very sentimental way, full of feelings. Sometimes people think of God's love as like a judge, like a school principal, like a ruler. That love you is just very stern. God loved the whole world. It's without feeling. But this Bible verse tells us that His love is full of feelings, that He will take great delight in you. Let me ask you. Are there many people who take great delight in you? No. Are there many people in the world when they see you, they're very happy? Not too many, right? I thank God. Every time when my wife sees me, you know, we communicate with, uh, thank God, you know, for these tools, WeChat or, or, or Skype, I can see her face when she sees me. Every time, 
<laughs> She's always like that. When I said, do you have time for a day tonight? And then she told me, for the whole day she'll be happy. When she heard me say that, that my wife is always like this. Let me tell you, God is like that. God shows his love through my wife. So let me see how much my wife loves me. God loves me much more. He did take great delight in you. He's very happy to see you. <laughs> Do you think of you like that? You know, when I pray, I say, Lord, I know you're very happy to see me. When I say that, my heart is full of joy. <laughs> I tell you, all the time, the joy just falls out from my heart. Hallelujah. When I think of Jesus. That's why I enjoy preaching. I enjoy preaching. Preaching is like heaven to me. My time with my wife is like heaven to me. My time of counseling with people is heaven to me. My time of going to different countries is heaven to me. Even ministering in hot weather is still heaven to me. <laughs> because I know God is really happy with us all. He loves us. And He quiets you with His love. One time in a hospital, I saw a mother holding a baby. And the baby probably was sick. That's why the mother has to go take, her, take the baby to the children's hospital. And then the baby was asleep. And the mother looked at the baby from the head to the toe. And when she looked at the baby, she was smiling. She was smiling. The baby did not respond because the baby was sleeping. But she kept smiling. And I just stood there. This is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And God is like that. God is looking at you with love now. God is looking at you with love. He'll quiet you, give you peace in love. God is so full of love, but many people just think of God a few minutes a day. So many people don't appreciate and don't think of the love of God. Just know God's love. And whenever there are difficulties, many Christians say, God, why don't you love me? Many Christians question God's love. And, you know, I feel God is being misunderstood by so many people. So many Christians say things negative about God. And I want to say positive things about God to people. That's my message. God is full of love. He is full of love toward us. He's looking at us with love. So when you pray, always think of, oh God, you're thinking of me. So when you leave worship, don't just say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Say something like this. God is looking at all of us with love right now. Oh, we can enjoy God's love. We can come to God and enjoy His presence. It's so wonderful to love God who loves us so much. It's so wonderful to enjoy His love. Hallelujah! Amen. Can the worship leaders try to do this? To lead people to think about God's love, to believe God's love, to enter God's love, to enjoy God's love. And that has to come from daily enjoying God's love. I enjoy God's love all the time. Whatever I look at, I think of God's love. I look at your eyes, I think of God's love. Because God has changed your heart. That you are open to the Word of God. That God has moved in your heart so that you are touched by the Word of God. And when people experience the Holy Spirit, I said, this is wonderful. That God works in such a wonderful way that people can experience God. So in everything, I see God's love. When I praise God, I can experience His love and joy and I say, this is from the love of God. When I look at furniture, Wood is created by God so that we have building material. When we look at fabric, it came from cotton or other material. God has created. And men use it, but it came from God. Everything we have came from God. Our life came from God. Our eyes came from God so that I can see you. And I can see your eyes. Isn't it beautiful? Amen. <laughs> Our eyes are beautiful. Amen. You look at the eyes of a child, a simple child, you can see beauty. When people grow up, sometimes they lose that simplicity. But I hope 
<laughs> you still maintain that simplicity. Now you look at me. Have you noticed that I'm very free with feelings? Many adults have blocked the feelings. That's one area that needs deliverance and freedom. Many people have hold back the feelings so that they don't feel anymore. They cannot <laughs> smile. No more smile. But I hope you can be filled with joy and freedom like little children. Jesus said, return and be like children. <laughs> In heaven, we'll all be like children. You know, one time someone I know, I've seen, I know a number of people who saw heaven or angels or Jesus or the book of life. I even know people who saw the book of life. One time I saw someone who saw angels, her angels. And she said, the angels were very tall. But when the angels turned around and she looked at the angels' face, they were like little children's face. They were just simple like little children. That they are like children in heaven. We'll be like children. Very simple. Isn't that beautiful? God is beautiful. And I pray for freedom for all of us that we become little children to enjoy God's love. And then He also will rejoice over you with singing. Do rejoice much? Ha! <laughs> many people lose the ability to rejoice. And many people think of God as being very stern. But actually, God is full of joy and freedom. That in Matthew 25, it talks about come and enjoy the happiness of your master. In heaven is full of joy. And every time I pray, I can experience His joy. And sometimes I said, is this from my mind or is it from God? So I said, don't think about joy, just think about Jesus. And I think about Jesus, the joy come again. So I came up with the conclusion, God is full of joy. God is full of joy. And I found a way that you can experience joy if you are willing to be free. I found that when I reach out my heart to God from my spirit, I can experience His joy anytime, anytime the joy will just come out. But for me, it's so simple and easy. But for some people, it's hard. And then I find that I found that it's some way it's, it's helpful when people cry out to God and think of our spirit ascend to God, to worship God, to run to God. Oh, hallelujah! <laughs> and some people would experience joy. And if you cry out with your voice thinking of your spirit ascending to God and with, really with all your breath. Ah, hallelujah. At the end of your breath, you might feel joy coming to you. Let's try it now. Close your eyes. Relax like little children and cry to Jesus. Ah, <laughs> cry out to the end of your breath. Ah, think of your, your, your voice ascending to God. Oh. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, 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 oh, hallelujah, isn't it wonderful, how many of you experienced joy just now, raise your hand. How many of you experienced joy just now? <coughs> Isn't that wonderful? Look around. Raise, keep your hands raised up. Keep your hand raised up. Look around. How many people experience joy? Isn't that wonderful? Joy is a free gift. No charge. <laughs> no charge. You just open your heart. Let your spirit ascend to God. Open your heart totally. And He will come to bless you with His joy. Isn't that wonderful? People pay a lot of money to get happiness. But we get it for free. Hallelujah. Because God come to sing over us with, with rejoice over us with singing. That when God sees you, He's so happy. Ah, <laughs> we rejoice over us with singing. God is a joyful God. So I hope you remember this verse. He will take, let's read together again. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Isn't that beautiful? Our God is beautiful. Our God is wonderful. 
Psalm 139, verse 5. Let's read. You have enclosed me behind and before. Oh, turn back, please. Turn back. Okay. Okay, let's read again. You have enclosed me behind and before, and laid your hand upon me. Psalm 139, verse 5. That this verse says that God is in front of you and behind you, and laying his hand on you, and blessing you all the time, and reminding you all the time, and draw you with his love all the time. That he's serving us all the time. Now, in ancient China, we had slaves. And when a master said to the slave, come, the slave has to come. If the slave doesn't come, the slave will be punished. And I'm sad to say that many Africans have been taken to America or some other country to be slaves. And when they were slaves, the master said to them, you have to do this, then they have to do it. If not, they will be punished heavily. Let me ask you this question. Is God our slave? No. By no means. But God serves us like a slave, even more than a slave. He surrounds you day and night forever and lay his hand upon you forever think about it is there someone in the world that minister to you serve you day and night all the time no. whenever you say come he will come whenever you ask him for help he always come to help you is there someone like that no. but God who is the king of kings the Lord of Lords he has a whole universe under him. But he'll come to serve us. And this is really paradoxical. He's the king of kings. He ruled over everything. But yet, he ministered to serve every single person. You know, when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, he was not sh just showing. He himself washed their feet. He's showing that God washed our feet all the time. God serves us all the time. Amen. God ministered to us all the time. It's not just in that last supper, but all the time, God is serving us. When you can experience joy, it's God serving you. It's God serving you all the time. When I think about that, I'm touched. God, who am I? Then you came to serve me all the time, day and night. Even when we sin, when I sin, God did not forsake me. He came to move in my heart until I obey Him. Before I experienced the Holy Spirit, many times I rejected God. When He touched my heart and moved me to repent, I did not. I resisted God. But after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I saw how God's love is so real. And I saw how I can bless people. And I can see from the Bible that God has a wonderful plan in my life. I said, God, you love me so much and I can bless so many people. I don't want to waste my life anymore. I want to serve God. And then when God speaks to me, I obey. I will say, Lord, yes, I will obey. Now, sometimes it takes some hesitation. But I try to respond immediately. Lord, yes, I want to obey. Let me use some simple illustration. Sometimes, you have to, you know, you can avoid paying some money. For instance, tax. You can avoid paying some tax if you don't report as much income. Many Christians do that. They just say, I don't have this income, and then they can, you know, avoid the tax. But I think of one day, we have to stand in front of God and the whole world, and it will show how much we have cheated on paying tax. When I think about that, Lord, I don't want to cheat you. I don't want to cheat the world. And then I said, okay, even though nobody knows I have this income, I'll pay tax on this. Now this is how I respond to God's voice. Is it difficult? <laughs> it's difficult when it comes to money, right? <laughs> it's difficult. But very often we don't want to respond to God. But God keep moving in your heart. God keep moving in your heart. For instance, some people, they mistreated me. I have the natural tendency to not to like them. But then God moves in my heart. And I say, if I don't like them, then it's my sin and my problem. And I 
choose to obey God and I choose to pray for them, to bless them, and to say nice things to them. There are people who said negative things to me many times and I kept saying positive things. I kept saying positive things. Even people who are serving under me, even the people who serve me, uh, you know, one of my co-workers, sometimes she, sometimes she, um, in some way, she let her emotions control herself. I will continue to guide her. I continue to have patience with her. I have more patience than she has with me because I want to submit to God. That's how we would want to respond to God because God is moving in our heart all the time. When I think about how God is moving in our heart all the time, my heart is touched. Oh Lord Jesus, who am I? That you serve me all the time. I hope that in your heart you are touched by God's love. Are you touched by God's love? And you listen to how I expound the Bible verses. Just a few verses. You can hear how God is full of love. There are many Bible verses that talk about God's love. And I hope that when you read these verses, that uh, you remember this. Okay, this is not very clear here. Psalm, ni Psalm 90, verse 14. Let's read this, read this together. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, unfailing love that we may sing for joy, sing for joy and be glad all our days. That God wants us to be full of joy all the days of our life and not to be burdened. God wants us to enjoy His love all the time that we rejoice and enjoy all the days of our life. Do you want to enjoy all the days of your life? Amen. Do you want to carry the anointing of the Holy Spirit? Amen. Then when you pray for people that they can experience God's love, Amen. then you can experience, they can experience the peace of God. You know, I have prayed for many people to lead them to Christ. In the next few days, I'm going to do training in um, uh, uh, pastor's uh, church for training. Uh, it might be a long way for you to go there. But, you know, I'm happy to come again to do some training here if time allows. That I can do some training on praying for people. When I pray for people, after I finish praying for them, I ask them, have you experienced anything during the prayer? I would say, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? And then some people say they experience peace or love or freedom or burdens go away or comfort to the body. And then I said to them, these are from the promises of the Bible. And then God has blessed you like this. Do you like God to bless you forever? And then they said yes. And then I said to them, uh, tell them about the gospel and encourage them to believe in Jesus. And then I've led many people to Jesus by praying for them. And then I've raised up the spiritual life of many people. I pray for them and they experience the Holy Spirit and I ask them what they've experienced. And they said they experience joy or peace or love. And I said, see how we can carry the power of God to pray for people to experience God. Do you want to carry the power of God to bless people? And then some people are willing. And then they can be used by God to minister to other people and raise up people to believe in Jesus and raise up Christians to serve God. Do you want to be like that? Yeah. And one day when you go to heaven, if you have the love of God all the time, you will be motivated by God's love to serve God and to take care of our sins and minister to people. And one day in heaven, God will show you, this large crowd of people have been brought to the kingdom of God by you. This large crowd of people has been blessed by you. You have blessed all these people, raised up their spiritual life. Do you think it's possible? Yeah. It is possible. When you're full of the love of God, when you're full of the freedom of God, and then you have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, when you pray much, you carry the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and then you pray for people. You see this happen day after day, and for your whole lifetime, think of it. If you can bring one person to Jesus in one month, you can bring hundreds of people, or even thousands of people. And one day you can lead meetings. You can go to different places and lead meetings and to be a, a missionary and bless many people. For me, I bless many people, and I encourage you to do that. It's not my ability. It's God's presence. It's God's gift because God has promised us the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you receive power to be my witness from Jerusalem to the end of the world. That is God's promise. Do you hunger for that? Yes. 
Do you hunger for that? If you hunger for that, we come in front of God and say, Lord, please forgive our sins. We have been angry with people, yell at people, we have maybe have fights in your family. You say, Lord, please forgive me. Help me to forgive my spouse. And even though they might not be nice, I still love them. I still care about them and love them. And your family might change. And that's how we start to serve God. Change your family. Change your daily way of relating to people. By loving them, caring for them, praying for them. When you keep praying for them, then you'll be able to be kind to them. When they go home, you say, oh, can I massage you? And when you see them, smile at them. Or you buy some food and say, I buy this, I bought this because I want you to enjoy it. You, you can add this saying, I want you to enjoy it because I love you, because I care about you. Are you willing to do that? Sometimes we're not willing because they have mistreated you. And you say, I don't want to do it. But that's submission to God. Submission to God is to say, I'm willing because God loves me. And also, you believe in the promises of God that God is very real. God blesses us and spend long time praying to God. Now, some people say, what do I say to pray so, for so long? Actually, you can say the prayer of grace. What is the prayer of grace? You just say, oh, the Lord, you're loving me. You're blessing me. You're with me now all the time. You're in front of me and behind me. You're laying your hand upon me. Oh, I'm so precious in your sight. You're always caring for me, and you have a wonderful plan in my life. Hallelujah. So it's declaring the grace of God. And then we can respond by loving God. Lord, I love you. I like you. I enjoy you. I want to be with you. And then you can pray for other people with zeal. Lord Jesus, bless this country. Bless the church. Bless the uh, pastors. Bless all the people who minister to us. And then you keep praying for them. But first, you declare the love of God all the time. God is loving me. God is with me. And I can enjoy God's love. I love God. I enjoy God. God is so wonderful. Lord, you're so wonderful. Hallelujah. You know, I tell you, a simple prayer is just to like God. Anytime when you're cooking, you like God. It's just like when you fall in love. Whatever you're doing, you'll be liking that person that you fall in love, right? <laughs> Same way. You're cooking and you like God. Oh, God is so good. That way, you keep in the presence of God all the time. And then also, the power of the Holy Spirit is for evangelism. And when you follow God like that, you keep praying every day, at least for half an hour, concentrated prayer. And then the whole day, praising God and loving God. You find the anointing of God will stay on you. And tonight, I'm happy to pray for you. And the pastors, uh, uh, the bishop will pray for you to experience the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit anointing will be upon you. And you keep the anointing. You go home tonight and keep praying like me on that day. <laughs> keep praying, keep praying to keep the anointing upon you. And then you find that in the future when you pray for people, you carry the power of God. Now at this point, I want to ask, are there two persons who are willing to come forward and demonstrate praying for you? Just to encourage other people so that you all be encouraged to come forward. Any two persons who come forward, you hunger for God, you say, I want to experience God more. I want to have a close relationship with God. Anyone, two persons, if you say, I want to be used by God, first you need courage. If you don't have the courage to step up, it's very hard for you to have courage to go and go to other places to bless people. Are there two courageous persons, hungry persons? Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Come forward, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give them hands. Okay, face me, please. Face me, please. And stand on the side, please. Okay, just close your eyes. Relax. We can have a catcher standing be behind them. Bye, Shaz. Just stand behind them. Oh. I notice when I pray, I'm just enjoying God. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, set her free. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There are many people who fall down, but there are also many people who don't fall down. It's okay. And I want to tell you that you don't have to fall down to experience the Holy Spirit. But if you feel the power, relax and let the power come upon you. Sometimes people, sorry, people that experience the peace of God, when they relax, the power of God will come upon them. For many people, they may experience peace, burdens go away, comfort of the body. This is from the presence of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus, bless them. Set them free. Hallelujah. Would you